Good afternoon and welcome to the week ahead video with me, David Madden. Today's date is Friday the 31st of January 2020 and the time has just gone 12.30 GMT. And I'm looking ahead to next week, which is Monday the 3rd of the Friday the 7th of February. Now, before we take a bit a look at the, uh, the big events of next week, let's discuss the big events of this week. And essentially the kind of major story of the, of the week has unfortunately been the uh, coronavirus. Um, it, the tragedy has now been deemed uh, a global emergency by the World Health, Health Organization. Uh, unfortunately, the death toll has been steadily rising, and so has the number of confirmed infections. And with that, we've seen traders uh, cut their positions in global, in global stocks and pour their funds into assets that are deemed to be lower risk, such as gold. Uh, essentially, the, the view from the markets is that the fortunately the predominantly the crisis is is uh, a problem in China and China is the second largest economy in the world and the view is that if uh, if China undergoes an economic downturn or a slowdown because of this the, the ripple out effect could be China's demand for from everything from oil metals luxury Western brands uh, transport uh, well, transport uh, tourism. Um, flights, tourism, all the sort of impact could uh, have, have an impact on companies listed in stock markets all over the world. So all of those major sectors have been impacted. Uh, we can see here, on, we're taking a look now on the, uh, the FTSE 100 to begin with. We can see that the FTSE has fallen to its lowest level in seven weeks. Uh, lowest level since mid-December. It's been a solid, it's been an aggressive downward trend the last few days. If we break below 7,300, it could take us down towards 7,200 and even potentially down back to the, to the early December lows. The FTSE, to be fair, has a disproportionately large amount of oil and gas and mining companies in its, in its composition, so it's a bit more susceptible to kind of perception that China is slowing down. That being said, you know, um, a lot of manufactured goods in Germany are sold over in China as well, so we're seeing a fairly aggressive sell off in the DAX. Uh, we're at lowest levels last seen in kind of early ish. January, so multi week lows. If you press and lower from here, we could be looking at targeting 13,000 or down to 12,900. Um, seeing as the, unfortunately, the bulk of the crisis is centered around China, I'll take a look at neighboring, at neighboring Japan, I'll take a look at what's going on on the, the Nikkei 225. Now, it's in a fair, it's a, it was lost some ground recently. We're certainly lower than we, than we were this time last week, but we're kind of holding up. Above the lows of yesterday, but the sentiment does appear to it does appear to be still negative. Uh, if we take out the lows of yesterday, uh, it could take us back towards this zone here, down around 22,400. Uh, it's only really if you get back above the 50 moving average here, uh, which is nearly at 23,600, could then we begin to think, you know what, maybe the downward trend uh, has been shaken off. Uh, I take a look at what's going on. With the S and P 500, now it did take it did take a big hit uh, at the beginning of the week. A good portion of the ground has been recovered, uh, but nonetheless, um, it still is in it, it, it's it's still south of 3,300. And while it remains below that metric, you know we could see sentiment uh, turn lower again. And should that be the case, and should we fall below the lows that were that were seen on Monday? It could take us back to the 50 moving average, this blue line here, uh, down to 3,217, or even this, this other consolidation in around 3,200 itself. So that could, as an area, provide, provide support should we see any further moves to the downside. Um, in terms of the other kind of big stories of the week just gone, the Federal Reserve kept interest rates on hold, no, no surprise there. But what was a bit of a surprise, to some traders at least, was the fact that the Bank of England kept rates on hold. Um, on t even during this week, there was markets are pricing in a roughly 50% chance of a rate cut. About two weeks ago, the probability in the market was in around 70% of a rate cut. And after all the talk yesterday, uh, the Bank of England voted 7-2 to two to keep rates on hold. So it was quite decisive in the end uh, for all the talk. And what, did that, what that happened was, and the reaction was, a decent enough move to the upside in the British pound versus the US dollar and the British pound, you know, push also higher against the euro and the likes. 
So I pushed higher against the US dollar. It's back above the 50 day moving average, this, this blue line here. If you can hold above that metric, it's likely we could see further gains be made and we could be looking at retesting the late December high in around one spot, 32.84. It's only really if we have a decent break below this zone here in the kind of 129 area, could then we begin to get we think, you know what, maybe we're in for uh, a bit of a a, bit, a few more losses um, on the the pound versus the US dollar. Now, looking ahead to next week, it is also worth pointing out, I think I make political news, but not much in economic news. Uh, this video has been recorded on Friday the 31st uh, of January. Um, at the time, I just, you know, it's just gone. 12:30 GMT, but <clears throat> excuse me, the UK is set to leave the European Union later tonight. Um, it will it will leave the European Union, but it will then be in the transition period, so it will it'll effectively abide by the rules uh, of the European Union, and that transition period is going to last for basically the rest of the year. I think it's going to we're going to have a lot of political headlines uh, in the months ahead of us, but I don't predict any major movements in the British pound. In terms of volatility just because until we have a clear idea of what the relationship between the united kingdom and the european union looks like after the transition period which that will end in late 2020 or early 2021 until we get an idea i don't think we're going to see much move in terms of sterling volatility i could be wrong but that's just what i think um speaking of um the the british pound um and volatility we're looking ahead to the big events. One of the big events of next week, uh, which is going to be in play, is going to be the US non farm payrolls report. And I'm taking a look on our economic calendar here, which can be found under news and analysis. And already um, we're looking at the headline figure for non farm payrolls came in at 156,000, which would be an improvement on the uh, previous reading of 145. Year on year earnings are supposed to increase from 2.9% to 3%. And the um, in terms of the actual unemployment rate itself, uh, the unemployment rate is supposed to hold steady at the 50-year low of 3.5%. So, out of that, out of those figures, I would argue that you know the, the earnings component is probably one of the more useful ones because let's face it, Americans who earn more tend to go out and spend more. Um, the unemployment, you know, when when your unemployment rate is there thereabouts, is is at 50-year lows, it's unless it's hard to Gain more, it's hard to create more jobs. It, you know, the US economy is almost a full employment. Uh, so that's going to create a lot of volatility. That report usually does. We also, at the same time, lest I forget about it, we also have an update from the from the Canadian jobs report and will be out at the same time. So it's quite likely that we could see a fair bit of volatility in the dollar versus the Canadian dollar. I'll take a look now at dollar CAD. So the Canadian dollar has been hit pretty hard recently uh, because of the weakness in the oil market. And with that, we've seen a decent move to the upside in US dollar versus the Canadian dollar. We're back above this trend line here. We're pretty much running run into the 200 moving average here. If we can continue on that upward trend, we could be looking at target highs of early December, north of one spot 33. Uh, the other big events of next week, uh, we have the Kaishin survey of Chinese manufacturing and services, that's going to be in play because it gives an idea of what's going on with the Chinese economy. Um, you know, any kind of signs of weakness in the Chinese economy um, would be kind of exacerbated potentially given what's going on in relation to the crisis. Uh, we have the final reading of, of services and manufacturing PMI reports from the major Eurozone countries, from the UK and the US. That would like a nice enough flavor of what's going on. In the, uh, in, in, in Europe and, and the US, but it probably won't have much of an impact because it, it is the final reading. The flash often provides some of the volatility. Uh, we have numbers out next week, Q4 numbers out from Google's parent, Alphabet. We can see here that the share price has been on a phenomenal run. We're not too far away from the all-time highs that were achieved um, only, only a few sessions ago. We're still very much in the upward trend. Um, if we look to kind of press on higher from here, and should we take out the kind of 1500 level, we could then be go going into kind of further, uh, further um, record high territory. And even if you pull back, support could be found in around 1400 or from this blue line here, the 50 day moving average. We have an update from the Reserve Bank of Australia. They are, are quite likely to keep interest rates on hold. 
And take a quick look at the Aussie dollar. It's been under massive pressure recently, given that Australia's uh, connectivity to, to, to China is impressing lower here. It's fall back to uh, uh, four, a, four, no, a four month low. If we continue to press a lower, we could be looking at targeting zero spot 66 on the Aussie dollar versus the US dollar. Um, we'll, also, well, also next week, we have fourth quarter numbers out from BP. Their shares have been hit hard already because of the underlying price in the oil, because of the underlying movements in the uh, in the oil market. So if we press a lower, and the share price has been pressing lower, so if we drive lower from here, we could be tracking at 455 or potentially 440. Uh, we also have numbers out from our developments. We have uh, quarterly, fourth quarter numbers out from Twitter as well as Uber. Uh, we've been talking about a lot of stocks that have, been, that have been underperforming recently because of what's going on in relation to in relation to the uh, health crisis. So I'll leave you on a high note. Um, it was only uh, only recently bar share price at its highest level since the credit crisis. So it's in very much a strong upward trend. If you press on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting 840, 50, so on and so forth. But even if you do have a pullback, support could be found from this blue line here, the 50 moving average in around 7, spot 732. Uh, that's all for me this week. Thank you very much. Have a good trading week and please tune in next week.